I do not want to memorialize genocide. I want to celebrate life. I do not want to speak to an abstract international community. I want to speak to my Rohingya brothers and sisters and talk to them about a possible future. It is the unacknowledged genocide that has made it impossible for me to do what I want to do today. I don't think our conscience needs to go to legal definitions to acknowledge that the Rohingya is killed simply because she is a Rohingya. By common sense, that is genocide. But we must have an international legal acknowledgement in order for the possibility of legal redress to begin. At least since 2017, they are killed and their land destroyed so that their name can be extinguished from the place where they have hung around in one way or another before any idea of the nation state. Genocide of the Rohingya has been acknowledged by the United Nations, even by the Congress of the United States, but it cannot be acknowledged by the International Criminal Court. Subterfuges are brought up regularly. Capital investment is also involved there. Greed combines with prejudice and nationalism is ethnicized. This is a global problem. Ethnicized nationalism destroys what is politely called illegal immigrants. Citizenship redefined. To greed and ethnicity is added sex. Genocide and land grab plus greed adds brutal rape and castration as spectacle, as weapon. Rape as weapon is also declared by the United Nations. Plenty of videographic evidence with no more than voyeuristic use, it seems. Rather listen to a Rohingya brother speak in rage. I wish I could play it for you. They themselves describe their condition as subhuman, as Nasiruddin with 500 plus hours of videos can witness. Therefore, we must not think of the international acknowledgement of genocide, which will make it politically possible for the Rohingya to be established on their own ground as an end. But as a beginning, no access to being human is possible unless the children can be trained. Remember, subhuman, no access to being human is possible unless the children can be trained in the intuitions of democracy which is the awareness of other people. I am dreaming the impossible dream of citizenship. The Rohingya, when they are in that position, their vote cannot be up for sale. It is only for the sake of that impossible dream that I exhort the international community, not so much to memorialize, but to acknowledge genocide and at the same time insist on divestiture. We must be able to think of the time after this acknowledgement is made and the Rohingya are more stable. I'm a teacher of the humanities beyond the disciplines as the instrument of the ethical. Our work begins in that stability. Countries in the region have not come forward to make this acknowledgement as an Indian I make an appeal to our best instincts, come forward for these brothers and sisters. I have been involved with the Rohingyas one way or another since the late eighties. But for me, as a person who has given her entire life to poetry, a mention of the great 17th century Rakhine poet, Alaul is necessary here. I have no blood quantum theory to tell me if he's a true Rohingya. I only know that he spoke of the Rohangs as his audience and that I met him across the hills of the Arakan region across 300 years as a young person, thanks to my mother as a classic from the area. He wrote of women who would not be raped and people who would not be killed. It is in his name, Alaul, that I ask you all, let us not stop at merely commemorating genocide 
rape, and greed. Celebrate the historical future as only memory can by pushing hard for legal acknowledgement. I embrace you all as the struggle goes on. I end by picking up the Rohingya self-description, subhuman, amanush. Manushe rodhikare, bontito kore chujare. Shomukhe dharae rekhe, tobu kule dao na isthan. Mrittu ma chethote habe, tahadir shabar shaman. Then we will memorialize genocide in a shared death. Let us avoid this. Thank you.